The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to today's chemistry A-level revision session. I am Mr. Wanye Kletus, your chemistry teacher. We are going to carry out phase four of chemistry revision for GCE A-level examination, which is under organic chemistry. And we shall revise organic chemistry under the following topics. Fundamentals of organic chemistry, functional groups and homologous series, reaction mechanisms and synthetic roots. Fundamentals of organic chemistry. The unique nature of carbon. Carbon is very unique here due to the fact that it can form single and multiple bonds. It can form single, double and triple bonds with itself and other atoms. Carbon again undergoes catenation. Carbon catenates extensively. That is, carbon is capable of forming rings or chains of identical atoms through covalent bonding. And carbon has a covalency of four. Bonding and hybridization. The S and the P orbitals of carbon overlap, forming sigma or pi bonds. The formation of sigma or pi bonds depends on the overlapping of, it depends on the mode of overlapping of the S and P orbitals. Hybridization. Carbon undergoes hybridization, which is the mixing of atomic orbitals of dissimilar energy to form new and equivalent molecular orbitals called hybrid orbitals. When carbon undergoes hybridization, it forms three sets of hybrid orbitals. The first, we have sp3 hybridization, which gives room to tetrahedral shapes with bone angle, with a bone angle of 105, 109.5. And this is common with the homologous series of arcades, where carbon, the carbon atoms are linked only by single covalent bonds. SP2 hybridization that gives room to planar shapes of bone angle 120. And this is common with the homologous series of arcanes, where the carbon atoms are linked by a double covalent bond. And the final hybridization SP gives room to a linear molecule with bone angle of 180 
And this is common with the homologous series of alkynes, where the carbon atoms are linked by a triple covalent bond. Identification of organic compounds. In order to identify organic compounds, it is imperative to first of all carry out purification of the organic compounds. And we have the following purification methods. Recrystallization, fractional distillation, steam distillation, and solvent extraction. Criteria for purity. For a solid compound to be considered to be pure, it must have a sharp melting point. And for a liquid to be said, for a liquid to be considered to be pure, it must have a sharp and constant boiling point. Procedure for identification of organic compounds. The first step is to isolate and purify the organic compound. So we have isolation and purification. We now carry out qualitative analysis. That is determination of the various atoms that make up the organic molecule. Qual quantitative analysis. Here we are, we are determining the amount of each atom in the organic molecule. We then proceed to determine the empirical formula of the molecule and hence the molecular formula. And the structural formula is determined from mass spectrometry. Spectroscopic methods to determine the structure of the structural formula. We have the spectroscopic method and the property identified. Mass spectrometry. What do we obtain from the relative molecular mass from different ionic fragments? Here we're talking of organic molecules. So we obtain relative molecular mass, not relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass is obtained for elements, but here we're dealing with organic molecules. So we obtain relative molecular mass. Infrared spectroscopy. Here we obtain different functional groups or bond types. Nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR. We determine the position of protons, that's hydrogen atoms, and other elements with odd number of protons. And we have the ultraviolet or UV spectroscopy. Here we come out with the presence and number of multiple bonds. So we use UV to determine the number of multiple bonds. Isomerism. It is the existence of two or more compounds with the same molecular formula, but having different properties and structural arrangements. We have the following types of isomerisms. We have structural isomerism, chain isomerism, position isomerism, functional group isomerism, totomerism or dynamic isomerism, and stereo isomerism, which is the stereo isomerism, which is the existence of compounds having the same molecular and structural formula, but differ in the arrangement of atoms in space. We have two types. Geometric, that is cis trans isomerism, and optical isomerism. Organic compounds and reactions, the homologous series. This is a group of, this is a family, or a group of organic compounds with a regular structural pattern in which successive members differ from each other by the CH2 group or by a mass of 14. Functional groups. A functional group is an atom or groups of atoms or a bond 
that determines the chemical properties of a homologous series. Reactions and bond fission to break it of bonds before reactions take place. An electrophile. An electrophile is an electron deficient species which seeks for an electron rich center during reactions. We have examples hydrogen ion, the chlorine positively charged ion, NO2 plus, that's a nitro ion. You have uh, other species which are not charged but are, are deficient in electron. We have uh, aluminum trichloride, boron trichloride, ion tribromide, and so on. Nucleophiles. A nucleophile is an electron rich species. And it seeks electron deficient centers during chemical reactions. To have examples, the OH, the hydroxide ion, OH minus, cyanide, CN minus. We will have ammonia, which is not charged, but it's a molecule. But it is rich in electrons because it possesses lone pairs of electrons. We have 18 1 2 diamine, and we only have the alcohol functional group. Bond fission and or breakage. We have two types of bond fission. The first type is homolytic fission. Here, the atoms involved in the covalent bond to be split are of similar or the same electronegativity. So when the bond is broken, both atoms path or go away or separate with the bonding atoms. So each atom separates with one of the bonding atoms. So the species that are produced here are called free radicals, very reactive species. We have heterolytic fission. The bond that is split during heterolytic fission is that which is a covalent bond made up of atoms of different electronegativities. When the molecule is split, the atom that is highly electronegative goes away with all the bonded electrons and becomes negatively charged, while that which is deficient goes without the bonded electrons and becomes positively charged. So we have examples there projected on your screen. When we split the chlorine hydrogen bond, hydrogen which is less loaded becomes H plus and chlorine becomes Cl minus. Factors influencing the reaction. We have inductive effects. This deals with the pooling of electrons in, from a covalent bond by an element which is very high in electronegativity. Well, the mesomeric effect. We have electromeric effect. And this is common with double bonds. This is the temporal shifting of the electrons in a double bond or triple bond on approach of a reagent. And we have steric hindrance or blocking, which is due to overcrowding of the, re of the reaction site by bulky groups. Types of organic reactions. We saw the following types of organic reactions, addition reactions, which is common to unsaturated molecules. We saw substitution or displacement reactions, which are common to saturated molecules. We equally saw elimination and rearrangement reactions. Homologous series and functional groups. We studied the following homologous series and their functional groups. We have alkanes. Arcanes were arcanes are made up of carbon to carbon single bonds. We have alkenes that are characterized by the functional group carbon to carbon double bonds. 
alkynes characterized by the carbon to carbon triple bonds. And we have aromatic hydrocarbons where we have the benzene ring that is made of alternate double and single bonds. We have haloalkanes and halogenoarenes. That is alkyl organic halogen compounds. And the ones that contain the benzene ring are called halogenoarenes. We have alcohols and phenols. Alcohols contain an alkyl group to which an OH group is, atten, is attached, while phenol is, is an aryl group to which an OH, OH group is directly attached. So we have a benzene ring to which an OH group is directly attached. We form phenol. Carbonyl compounds. They possess the carbonyl functional group where we have a carbon atom bonded to an oxygen atom by a double bond. We may then have a hydrogen atom or a metal group attached to that carbon. So we call the carbon that is bonded to the oxygen atom the carbonyl carbon. We have carboxylic acids characterized by the functional group COOH. So we have a carbon atom bonded to an oxygen atom through a double bond and to an OH group. We equally have carboxylic acid, functional derivatives of carboxylic acids. We have acyclorides, acid and hydrides. We have amides and esters, organic nitrogen compounds. We have nitrides, characterized by carbon to nitrogen triple bond. You have amines, NH2. We have nitro compounds, NO2, and so on. Homologous series and functional groups continue. We saw the nomenclature of each of the homologous series. We saw the properties of all the homologous series, and we studied the chemical properties. Here we looked, we looked at the methods of preparation of the, each of the homologous series, we saw their reactions. And we equally identify, we carry out identification and distinguishing test between members of each of the homologous series. Reaction mechanism and synthetic roots. We saw the following reaction mechanisms. Free radical substitution, which is characterized by the reactions of alkanes. We saw electrophilic addition carried out by alkenes and alkynes. Again, we saw electrophilic substitution. We saw electrophilic addition carried out by alkenes and alkynes. And we equally saw electrophilic substitution carried out by arenes, especially the benzene ring. Then we saw nucleophilic substitution carried out by alkyl or aryl halides and acid derivatives. Then the aldehydes and ketones, that is the homologous of carbonyl compounds, carried out nucleophilic addition reaction. And uh, alkyl halides, alcohols, in addition to the substitution reactions, they equally carry out elimination reactions. Other types of reactions that we saw include polymerization, condensation, decarboxylation, and saponification. Synthetic roots. We equally saw synthetic roots where we carried out interconversions from one homologous series to the other, cutting across the entire organic chemistry or the entire homologous series, and we equally saw reactions within a particular reaction or within a particular homologous series. We have come to the end of revision for phase four. 
which was on organic chemistry. Stay connected for revision questions. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV and UNESCO. And UNICEF We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. We will revise questions beginning with multiple choice questions which are the one type questions one which of the following compounds on reaction with sodium nitrite it had a chloric acid at five degrees celsius will produce nitrogen gas as one of the products we have the mixture there sodium nitrite in scl that's our reagent and the condition five degrees Celsius. A, we have ethanamide, B, phenylamine, C, benzylamine, and D, Dimethylamine. They are all amines. Our mixture, sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid, produces nitrous acid. And nitrous acid reacts with amines to form diazonium salts. The stability of the diazonium salts depends on the temperature. Only aromatic diazonium salts are stable less than five degrees Celsius. Aliphatic diazonium salts decompose even at zero degrees to give nitrogen and the corresponding alcohol. So the only compound that will produce the nitrogen will be a primary amine and that is compound C. Two, which of the following compounds is optical, is optically active? A, hydroxybutane. B, propene. C, butane dioic acid, butane dioic acid and D, propane to all. For us to identify an organic compound that is optically active, we locate the chiral center. We locate the chiral carbon atom. 
That is a carbon atom that has four different groups attached to it. So if we scan through our options, we realize that compound A has a chiral carbon because it has four different groups attached to it. Therefore, compound A is capable of carrying out optical isomerism. So A is the correct answer. Three, which of the following compounds will react with the product of its own oxidation to form a sweet smelling liquid, ester? An ester is formed from a reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. A, butanal, B, butan 1 all, C, butan 2 all, and D, butanoic acid. For us to form an ester between a compound and its own oxygen product, it means that compound has to be an alcohol and its oxygen products give us a carboxylic acid, so that the two would have to give us an ester, the sweet smelling liquid. So the only compound that can oxidize to give us a carboxylic acid is butan one all, which is B. Four, nitrobenzene can be converted into phenol by the following steps. We have a synthetic group put it on your screen. We have nitro benzene to phenylamine, then to phenol. The reagents and reaction conditions for the conversion labeled one and two, respectively, are tin in hydrochloric acid and sodium nitride in hydrochloric acid at a temperature greater than one than greater than 10 degrees Celsius. We have B, sodium nitride, hydrochloric acid at room temperature, and water at temperature greater than 10 degrees Celsius. C, tin in hydrochloric acid, and aqueous nitrous acid at temperature less than five degrees Celsius. And D, ion in hydrochloric acid, and aqueous hydrochloric acid at temperature less than five degrees Celsius. The first stage, converting from nitro to nitrobenzene to, phen to phenylamine, there is a reduction. We are reducing, there's reduction. That to be able to form Phenol from phenylamine that will react to form the diazonium salt. Then the temperature now determines the formation of phenol. So to reduce from nitrophenol to phenylamine, we use tin in hydrochloric acid. And to convert phenylamine to phenol, we react sodium nitrate hydrochloric acid to produce nitrous acid and the temperature should be greater than 10 100 degrees greater than 10 degrees celsius so that the benzene diazonium salt decomposes to give us phenol so our correct reagents correspond to option a five the correct product of the reaction between Propanamide, formula given CH3, CH2CON2, with bromine in potassium hydroxide is A, CH2, CH3, CH2, Br, CONH2. That's A, B, CH3, CH2, NH2. C, CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2, and D, CH3, CH2, 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 and NH2. 
bromine and potassium hydroxide is a reagent for Hoffman's degradation. Where the product that is formed is one carbon less than the reactor. So it's a step down reaction. So we expect to have a product that is one carbon less than our reactor. So our reactor had three carbons. So we expect our, our product to have two carbons. And since it's, a, it's, an, it's an amide, we will be converted to an amine. So the only compound that fit that condition is option B, CH2, CH3, CH2, NH2. Six, name the molecule given below. A, n heptane B, 2-methyl-2-ethyl-butane. C, 3-3-dimethyl-pentane. And D, 2-2-dimethyl-propane. Naming of organic molecules. We locate the longest carbon chain, and we now locate the positions that have branches, beginning with the uh, branch that is closest to the, to the end, to one of the ends. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So the longest chain there is five, the so five carbon chain. It's an arcane, so we have pentane. But when we look carefully, we have three metal groups attached to carbon one, two, three. We have two metal groups attached to carbon three. So we now read the, give the name of the compound, three, three dimethyl pentane. And that corresponds to option C. Seven. Three alcohols, W, X, W, and N, have the same molecular formula, C9, C4, H9, O8. On oxidation, using acidified potassium dichromate, the product form with W gives a silver mirror with tolerance reagent. The structure of W is likely to be a CH3, COH, CH3, CH3. B, CH3, CH, double bond, CH, CH2, OH. C, CH3, CH, OH, CH2, CH3. D, CH3, CH2, 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 OH. We are, react, we are oxidizing the compound using acidified potassium permanganate, uh, dichromate, please. Using acidified potassium dichromate, that's an oxidizing agent. And we are told that the oxidation product, when treated with toleus reagent, we obtain a silver mirror. So when we oxidize alcohols, we add our form ketones or other heights, depending on the nature of the alcohol. And tolerance reagent, we can only form a silver mirror with tolerance reagent if the compound is, a redu is reducing. So between other heights and ketones, only other heights can give a, tolerant, uh, a silver mirror with tolerance reagent because they, they are reducing. So therefore, to be able to form an other height, we can only oxidize a primary alcohol. And in that group, D is a primary alcohol. For McConnichol's rule to apply, A, the most stable transition state is the one leading to the most substituted carbocation. The nucleophile acts during the second step of the reaction. The electrophile acts to the less and sub Substituted N of the double bond and D, all of the above. McConnichol's rule to apply. The double bond is first attacked by the electrophile, then the nucleophile comes now to the carbocation. 
So the correct procedure is B. The nucleophile acts during the second step of the reaction. Nine, supply the missing reagent for the synthetic route. So we have A, NH2, NH2, B, NH3, C, NH2OH, and D, water. You realize that the product, the OH, the carbon O double bond has been replaced with carbon nitrogen double bond with an OH. So the only possible reagent that can give us that product is reagent C, NH2O2. NH2OH, NH2OH, option C. 10. We have the multiple combustion type of multiple choice. We have the directions there summarized. A is correct if A is the option if one, two, three. Statement one, two, and three are correct. If only statements two, one and two are correct, then B is the correct option. If only statements two and three are correct, then we take C. And if only statement three is correct, then we take option D. Ten. Primary alcohols can be prepared by one, reducing other heights using lithium aluminum tetrahydride in dry ether. Two, reducing esters using lithium aluminum tetrahydride in dry ether. And three, hydrogenating alkenes in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. For statement three, if we are to obtain primary alcohols, then it depends on the nature of the alkene. But here I'll just be given hydrated alkenes. The structure has not been specified. So you can either obtain secondary or primary alcohols if alkenes are hydrated using concentrated sulfuric acid. So the primary alcohol will depend on the structure. So the structure has not been specified. Only then one and two are perfectly correct. So the option there is B. 11. Lactic acid, that is hydroxy propanoid acid, can exhibit a functional group isomerism. One, functional group isomerism. Two, position isomerism. And three, optical isomerism. When you look at the molecular formula, there's a chiral carbon, and the OH group can be shifted to the other carbon. So it exhibits two isomerisms, position and optical isomerism. So two and three, statements two and three are correct. So that gives us option C. And 12, which of the following factors affect or affects the reactivity of organic compounds? One, organic reagents and solvent effects. Two, mesomeric and inductive effects and three, resonance and steric effects. We saw all these factors during the revision. We were, we were reviewing the factors that affect re reactions. So we saw all the three factors. So all those three statements are correct. That gives us option A. We now move to the second type of questions. That's the paper two type, structural. Study the reaction scheme below and answer the questions that follow. So you have the reaction scheme there, projected on your screen. A, Roman 1, identify the following compounds. You have compound C, D, and G. So you give the structure and the name. Two, to which class of compounds does E belong? B, give the reagents and reaction conditions for the stages S, V, and W. C, name the reactions involved in the conversions of A to F and A to B. D, outline the mechanism associated with the process R. That's Roman one. Roman two, F is an organic compound containing nitrogen. Describe how the presence of nitrogen in the compound could be 
identified. E, give a chemical test for compound C. Give the name and structure of, that is F, give the name and structure of an aliphatic amide, B, an aromatic primary amine, the Roman one, an aliphatic amide, Roman two, an aromatic primary amine, and Roman three, how would you distinguish between an amide and an amine? Answers. So we're asked to study the reaction scheme and answer the questions that follow. So I'll quickly project the, again the ration scheme, then we'll go back to our answers. Compound C structure, CH3, C, triple bond, CH. And that is propyne, not ethyne, please. On the screen is ethyne. It is propyne, that's a three carbon compound, not ethyne. Propyne. D. We have CH3 as a structure, CH2, 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 and CH3. And that is, it has six carbons, so that's N hexane. And G, CH3, CH2, CH2OH, propan one all. To which class of compounds does E belong? E has two oxygen, at uh, two oxygen atoms. So it belongs to the carboxylic acid functional, or functional group or homologous series of carboxylic acids. Give the reagent and reaction conditions for the stages S, B, and W. First, for S, we look at the scheme, rather the carbon chain is doubling. We're moving from three carbons to six. So the reagent is chloropropane in sodium metal. So we're adding chloropropane with sodium metal. V, stage V, our reagent, concentrated ammonia or aqueous ammonia, and the condition reflux. And for W, our reagents, we have sodium nitride in concentrated hydrochloric acid and the condition zero degrees, zero degree Celsius. Name the reactions involved in the conversions of Roman 1, A to F. When we look at the scheme, we have nucleophilic substitution. A to B is, a, is, is a elimination and specifically is dehydrohalogenation. Outline the mechanism associated with process arrow. So we're converting propane to chloropropane. And our, and our agenda is SCL. So the halogen end is partially positive and the chlorine end partially negative. So the double bond attacks the positive end of the reagent. So our arrow, is, uh, you can see on the screen, is moving from the double bond, which is rich, which is an electron-rich center, to the hydrogen, uh, to the hydrogen actor, which is partially positively charged, which is electron deficient. So that attacks, forms a carbocation, which then, which positively charged, is then attacked by Cl minus, the chloride ion. So look at the direction of the arrow again, moving from a negative center to the positive center. So the direction of arrows there, very important. F, the Roman 2 F, is an organic compound containing nitrogen. Describe how the presence of nitrogen in the compound could be identified. So this is a test, qualitative analysis. Heat a small amount of the organic compound with molten sodium and filter. To the filter, add ion 2 sulfate, followed by ion 3 chloride and concentrated hydrochloric acid. The appearance of a bluish green precipitate indicates the presence of nitrogen. 
E, Roman 1. Give the chemical test for compound C. Compound C is propyne, so it's a terminal alkyne. So it can be tested by reacting C with ammoniaca silver nitrate solution. And C will give a yellow or white precipitate. F, give the name and structure of an aliphatic amide. We have example there, the structure CH3CONH2. That is the name, ethanamide. And an aromatic primary amine, we have the benzene ring to which is attached NH2. So the structure, benzene ring, NH2, and the name, phenylamine or aniline. How would you distinguish between an, an amide and an amine? Both of them contain NH2. Each of the compounds is heated with sodium hydroxide in separate test tubes. The amide releases ammonia. You can test for ammonia, it's a pungent gas that, that turns moist red in multiple blue, while the amine will not. Question two. Consider the compound PT. This compound exhibits isomerism. What is isomerism? Two, write down the structure and names of any four isomers of butene. The conversion of benzene, that's B, the conversion of benzene to, to phenyl methyl ketone is said to be an electrophilic substitution reaction. Identify one, Roman one, the electrophile. Roman two, show how it is generated. Roman two, three, phenyl methyl ketone can be converted to an alcohol and also into a cyanohydrin. Write equations for the conversions, A to alcohol and B to cyanohydrin. C, study the reaction path below and answer the equations that follow. So you have the, the reaction path there. <laughs> That's what all the synthetic route. C, identify compounds A, B, C, and D, and E by drawing the structures only. Identify two possible reagents, T, Give the advantage of one over the other. D, give reagents to distinguish between Roman one, propanol and propanone, and Roman two, ethanol and ethyl ethanol. Answer, consider, consider the compound between. This compound exhibits isomerism. Roman one, what is isomerism? The existence of compounds, there's two or more compounds, organic compounds, with the same molecular formula, but different structural representations with different properties. Write down the structure of and names of any four isomers of butene. So the first structure there, CH3, CH2, CH1, CH2. The structure, name, but one in the second, Structure CH3, C, C, CH2, then the, the carbon that has that the, one of the carbon, the mid, carbon in the middle has a CH3 group attached to it. So the name 2 methyl propene. 2 methyl propene. Next, isomer CH3, C double bond CH3. That is cis bit two in. Then you see that the metal groups are on the same side of the double bond. So it's cis bit two in. Why the next structure? The metal groups are on opposite sides or an opposite double bond. So you call that trans bit two in. B. The conversion of benzene to phenyl methyl ketone is said to be an electrophilic substitution reaction. Identify the electrophile. Phenyl methyl ketone. What is our electrophile? Our electrophile should, should, should contain a carbonyl compound, a carbonyl carbon. So since it's a ketone, so we have CH3CO. 
with a positive charge on the carbon. Show how it is generated. So we, we react. Ethanol chloride with aluminum trichloride. So we, we, we form the electrophile and AlCl4 minus. So phenyl methyl ketone can be converted into an alcohol and also into a cyanohydrin. Write equations for the conversion of the conversion to A, alcohol. So you have the phenyl methyl ketone. When we react it with lithium aluminum trichloride and dry ether, that's a reduction exercise. So the ketone is reduced to a secondary alcohol. And when we react, the phenyl methyl ketone, that is a, a ketone with HCN, we undergo a nucleophilic additional reaction. So we form the a cyanohydrin. Identify the compounds A, B, C, and D, and E by drawing the structures only. So that is from the synthetic group that we had. That, 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 that's a synthetic root. Compound A, structures only, CH3, CH, double bond, CH2. Compound B, CH3, CH2, CH2, BR. Compound C, CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Compound D, CH3, CH2, CH2, CL. And compound E, CH3, CH2, COOH. Identify two possible reagents, T, and give the advantage of one over the other. So let's go and look at the conversion for T. So conversion for T, okay, T, T there on the diagram is a conversion from C to D. So the reagent converting C to D is T. So C there is an alcohol, and we have a chloro, uh, chloro, uh, an organic chloro, chloro compound, the uh, D. So we can only obtain, for example, what we have the chloropropane from propanol by two possible reagents, PCL5 and taunyl chloride. So those are the only two reagents that will convert an alcohol to a chloroalkane. So we're asked to give the advantage of one over the other. Taunic chloride is advantageous over PCL5 because the byproducts are all gases and can easily be separated from the main product. Give reagents to distinguish between propanol and propanol. So we have, we can use tolerance reagent with ammoniaca silver nitrate in sodium hydroxide. We we'll obtain a silver mirror. Propanol will give us silver mirror, propanol will not, will not. We can use a felines solution where we we'll obtain a red, red brown precipitate with propanol, but propanol will not. We can equally use a sodium hydroxide in uh, iodine, that is a iodoform test. Then we can equally use a potassium iodide in sodium carbonate. That's the, that's the iodoform test, another agent for iodoform test. So we realize that propanol will not give us the iodoform test. That is a pale yellow precipitate with antiseptic smell. But propanol, which is a methyl ketone, will give us the pale yellow precipitate, triiodomethane, with antiseptic smell. Ethanol and ethyl ethanol. So we can use PCL5. Ethanol will produce misty white fumes of SCL. Ethyl ethanol will not. Or we'll use sodium hydroxide in, in, in uh, iodine. That is still the iodoform test. Ethanol is the only primary alcohol that will give us a positive iodoform test, where ethyl ethanol will not. Three, 
given compounds A and B, the compounds are stated on your screen, how would the compound B be obtained from compound A? Compound B is a solid. How would a pure sample of this obtain, of this compound be obtained? Roman 3, how would its purity be verified? B Roman 1, arrange the following compounds in order of their reactivity towards, electro, towards electrophile such as E plus with the most reactive first of benzene, phenol, natural benzene, and explain. Write the mechanism for the following reaction. So we're converting benzene to bromobenzene. C, the compound P can be converted to other compounds according to the scheme below. We have compound B give us A, compound P, reagent A give us compound A, reagent B give us compound B, and reagent C give us compound C. Give the reagent arrangement conditions for the conversions A, B, and C. Write Roman 2, write the mechanism for the conversion of B. Roman 3, write the equation for the of compound A with concentrated of free acid at 170 degrees Celsius. Name the reaction that occurs between compounds A and C. D, organic compounds can be classified according to functional groups. One, define the term functional groups. Roman 2, write an equation for the relation between bromoethane, that is C3, C2Br, and each of the following compounds, potassium cyanide and aqueous sodium hydroxide. Solution or answers. Give me the compounds A and B, the compounds are there. How will compound B be obtained from compound A? We look at the compound, like compound A to compound B, one of the groups, one of those groups there has been oxidized. So we use an oxidizing agent, acidified potassium dichromate or acidified potassium permanganate. Compound B is a solid in solution, so how can it be obtained? Pure by recrystallization. How could its purity be verified? We saw that when we do revision, that it's a solid. So for a solid to be pure, it must have a fixed or sharp or constant melting point. Arrange the following compounds in order of their reactivity towards electrophile. So we'll look at electrophilic reaction of benzene, phenol, and nitrogen. That should begin with the most the reactive. So, so the other, we have phenol, benzene, and natural benzene. Explanation, the oil group in phenol is activated, hence increase the electron density of the benzene ring, making it more reactive towards electrophiles than benzene. Why the natural group in natural benzene is deactivated, that is electron withdrawn, hence decreases the electron density of the benzene ring, making it less reactive towards electrophiles than benzene. Write the mechanism for reaction for the reaction that uh, benzene to bromobenzene. So first of all, that's a new, an electrophilic substance. So we have to generate our electrophile. So we add bromine with FeBr3. We obtain our electrophile Br plus, which is then attacked by the benzene ring. The benzene ring is rich in electrons, so it attacks. They will form that intermediate where the delocalized electron cell of benzene is distorted. So FEB, FEBR4 minus then picks up a proton in order to re-establish the delocalized pi electron system. The compounds P, the compound P can be converted to other products according to the scheme there. Give reagents and reaction conditions for the conversions A, B, and C. A, reagent, lithium anhydride hydride, condition, dry ether. B, reagent, SCN, condition, sodium or in alkaline medium. Or we can use KCN, and the question will be the low sulfuric acid between 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. C, reagent, acidified potassium dichromate. Condition will be warm. Or usual acidified potassium permanganate condition room temperature. Write the mechanism for the formation of B. So we have to generate our nucleophile as nucleophile addition. Our nucleophile comes from SCN, we have H plus and CN minus. CN minus attack 
the carbonyl carbon, which is deficient in electrons, and the carbon, the double bond that opens up. So what O minus that picks up the proton to form the cyanohydrin.